chasing thick. I've got a really light outfit here. <laughs> Not a lot of light. Today we're fishing with one of the Wilsons boys, affectionately known at home as Dicko. Now Cord back in the office reckons he's, he's the real boss there, but mate, I reckon word on the floor is that Dicko's the real boss of Wilsons today. So <laughs> we're gonna find out, but regardless, out here, this is his domain and he's good at dominating out here. You, you love your lure fishing, but you've grown up really getting your hands on to the, the live baiting scene. Today we're out here to try and catch a few snapper. We got Stratty in the background, Morton a bit further up that way, and the plan is today put some liveys down there and hopefully play with some of the big critters here, mate. Yeah, we're gonna have a quick go on the cathedrals here and see if we can catch a few snapper and uh, move our way down south towards the Gold Coast and see if we can turn one of those smaller snapper into a big one. All right, well, we've, we've got out early before uh, the, the sun came up. Got our liveys, got a nice big bucket full of liveys ready to go. They're good all kicking, getting a bit nervous already, which is good to see. Sun's coming up. I can see fish coming through. Fish are on the sounder. sounder. Let's go, mate, get into it. You'll probably find when with, with, with a big livey on, you'll find that it'll, when it hits the bottom, it actually speed up. You'll feel them, the single hit the bottom and the livey will take off. Yeah, and you'll think, oh yeah, it's a hit. But once you sort of, you realise that it's just a, just a livey, livey getting real anxious and taken yeah. off. <laughs> but there is a little bit of an art to, um, to getting the feel of it, especially with such a little light lead. You remember, we're still in 50, 50 metres of water, we've only got a four ball sinker on and a livey that wants to swim away from you. So there is a little bit of a little bit of art in it, but once you sort of work out where that bottom is, then, you, then you're in business sort of thing. My, the way I do it is really, if, if you're getting to the bottom too easy, you're not, you're fishing too heavy. It's not, you know? subtle, not subtle enough yeah. for the bigger guys. Yeah. That's funny, it's funny though, Dicko, you fish any style of fishing, I think, with, particularly with snapper, you know, baits, plastics, yeah. and if it's too heavy and sinks too quick, yeah, you'll still get the odd, you know, yeah. two and a half and the, the maybe the odd three kegger, but you're not going to fool the bigger ones. No. And they are a smart fish. That's why lots of people don't catch those 10 kilo ones, because they didn't get 10 kilos of being <laughs> stupid. No. Like my live, he's just hit the bottom there now. I can feel him just... Slowed right off. Quite often, if I'm fishing, I'll, I'll wind it up a bit, and that brings the sinker back to the back to the hooks, and then just let him float out again. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. A bit of a knock on the door. Better let him eat it. Hey, little fella. He still ain't alive, you but Ain't alive. -y. There you go. Hey, little fella. We are fishing quite heavy, but like heavy, heavy pound line. Like we've got about a 50 pound line on there, but you, you just never know when that big, big amberjack or big Kobe or something like that. This ain't little fella, but he still ain't alive. He. <laughs> you can see that that rig there we're using. It's just a simple floating bull sinker, runs straight down onto the hook. Look at ah. that. Mine was a knob. Ah. I reckon Nigel's is a knob. Hang on, I'll get that parachute ah. down here. Ah. Oh. You guys getting excited? That's a nice fish. Look at that. I missed one. You did. <laughs> well and truly. That's a nice fish, Nigel. Ah. Woohoo! Got some Good going. Fish. All right. 
intriguing technique, you know, just finding those patches of ground and then obviously matching your, like you said before, your ball weight to get that really nice subtle sink, get those baits down there. You know, if you, you've got to try and go as light as possible but heavy enough to get your bait down because we're still fishing in like 60 metres of water, so you've got to get your bait down there because it's only little tiny lumps and bumps that we're fishing. And this, this ground here is quite, you know, rubbly. It's not no distinct bumps. It's not, not like a big bomb or anything. Yeah, no. you're right. It's just... This is this a nice fish, this one. Cruising ground. and I can see the benefit of using the overhead now, Dicko. You know, like you obviously get it down to that bottom third quite quickly and then it's a case of just slowly feed it out and feed it out. It's very much a, a game of feel. So having a reel that gives you that immediate contact is really nice. Yeah, definitely. And, and to be able to... The line just rolls off the drum. You know what I mean? Like... And, and that's another reason why I use mono too, because I'll get out of the way. Another reason why we use um, mono, because I think it just, just comes off, just folds off the reel nicely. Yeah. And in this case, I mean, I fish a lot with braid, but the moment you come back to that mono, you've got to appreciate that you have got that stretch there. So, you know, I watched you strike that first fish and you, you didn't strike with the rod. You wound with You just the crank like crazy just to start setting those hooks. I only just missed him too, looking at that bait. I'll get the net ready. There we go. Coming up. This is a nice fish, this. I can see some colour. Nice knobby. There yeah. he comes. Nice fish. Very nice fish. That's a cracker. Good work, Nigel. Oh, yeah. Oh, big hump-headed one. Look at that. Oh, one more. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> you said, Nige, come here. Mate. I'll show you some big bumpy headed ones. I'll tell you what, Nige, I reckon he's going to go a good, a good nine. That's a big fish, Dicko. Good nine. Dicko and... Uh... Good work, mate. Good stuff. <laughs> mate, it's, you appreciate fish like that. You know, like, I've been chasing snap around Queensland for 10 years. I mean, you, know, you really want to get that 10 kilo fish, but anything that comes up with those, that size head and that bump on it, it's just a pleasure to get on board. Mate, he's, he's going to go close. <laughs> That's gonna, a beautiful he's, fish. He's, he's a nice solid one. We'll get him out of the net and we'll have a good look at him. That's it. All right, there's the, the rewards for getting up at the crack of dawn. You did have us up very early. Oh, yeah, the camera really crew early. were a bit shocked this morning. We were up early. Get out there, got the liveys, we hit the ground, you know, it's like it's now, now mid-morning and we worked hard through the morning, but getting close to tide turn, another key time to get your snapper getting a little Definitely. bit cranky, mate, you found the ground and also travelling, you know, we, we're on the drift, getting our baits covering as much of that ground as possible and then presenting it right and I think that's a really key ingredient to catching quality fish. Mate, you, it's not is, every day you get to catch a fish like this, nah. you know, nice big bubble nose, big hump on his head, beautiful southeast Queensland snapper. Good work, Nige. <laughs> well, as you can see, we just caught that nice fish that um, Nige caught. I actually had a hook up at exactly the same time. Well, actually, probably just before you, Nige um, hooked his. And that's a typical snapper bite. You can see he's just missed the hooks. Had the sinker in his gob because he's got all teeth marks in the sinker. That qu quite often happens when you're a bit too fast on the strike. You know, I, I should have let him eat it a bit more. I let him let him eat it, get it down right down his stomach. But um, Anyway, that's a, that's a missed opportunity. We'll have to go and see if I can catch one now. Dicko and I are fishing in a, a range of water depths between 45 to 65 metres today. And we're using a technique which will easily cover all those depths of water. What Dicko's doing really well is cruising around, finding nice patches of rubble that are showing signs of, of bait and the odd arch. And we're really focusing in on those zones and then using a, a nice drifting technique to allow our baits to work right through those zones which, which look like they're productive on the sounder. It's blowing around 10 knots at the moment and to slow our drift through these areas, Dicko's got the Drogan action out the back, which means we can control that drift speed and, and just better present that bait for longer to fish that are down on the bottom. Once you've rigged up your livey, it's just a case of tossing it out the back and then because at the moment we're fishing in 50 metres of water, you want to get it down there reasonably quickly so that first 30 odd metres of water quickly feed out line and then when you know you're getting into that bottom third of the water column, then you want to really slow it up a little bit and slowly start feeding that livey out. Because when the fish are active, you'll find they do come up off the bottom to feed. And you can get those bites anywhere from 10 to 20 metres up off the bottom to, to right down, hard against the rock. 
Just get it down there, get a nice subtle presentation of your livey, and just keep feeding it out behind the boat. Every now and again pause it, let the livey swim behind the boat, and then just keep feeding it out until hopefully something grabs a hold of it. I'll just, I'll just go through the procedure of how to, um, to rig up a live bait. That's a um, yellowtail scad. That's probably the perfect size for um, snapper fishing. Um, you've got a set of gangs. It's flicking around a bit. But the idea is just to go nice and lightly behind the back of the head, like so. And then that front hook through the soft membrane of his nose. So you haven't gone too deep so you don't kill him. He's just, just nice and lightly, just, just like so. And then he's ready to, ready to go down. This job of float lining or, or drifting with baits has been made really easy today with the outfits that Dicko and I have been using. I've held on today very quickly. Struck my eyes being a really nice outfit and I grabbed this one out of the rack straight away and I haven't let go of it since. It's the Live Fiber Wilson's Texalium in the 10 to 20 kilos. I've matched that up with the Tiburon overhead, which is spooled with 50 pound monofilament. This rod's not just nice to hold and feed out line while you're bait fishing. Plenty of lower end butt strength to give you that authority when you're fishing. And also a really nice soft tip, which, is, which gives you that subtle part to bait fishing, which is really important. Letting fish load up without them feeling you there. And then also a little bit of shock absorption when you're winding them up to the boat. All in all, it's a perfect outfit if you want to get into your snapper bait fishing. and I got a pretty good feed already. That guy had plenty of life in him, so you know, obviously with signs showing we might have declining snapper stocks heading, heading our way. Always pays to take feed of fresh fish, particularly the right size eating ones and anyone whatever else you, you don't need go for another day. All right, mate, your turn, Dicko. Oh, come on, come on. What have you got, Dicko? Got him up? Oh, the boat's moving. This is a good fish. This oh, come on. Head shakes. Oh, this is a knobby. Work the coat. Draw me up. As you, when I hooked that fish, then oh, I was just letting it, letting it roll out, letting it roll out, and I just felt him pick it up. And I let him have it, have it a little bit, and then I just. Clicked it in the gear and started winding the handle. I didn't strike on the rod weirdly or anything like that. You sort of started winding. This is another nice fish. I don't think he's absolutely huge, but still a good fish. It's all right. Oh, well done, Dico. There we go. Feel that. Dico reckons. Dico reckons it's only a little one. <laughs> Dicko's standards might be a little bit different to many of the rest of us. It's a fairly chunky snapper in anyone's language. It'd be five and a half, six kilos, I reckon. There you go, you got your little mustard gang rig. Number four ball sinker, and you mentioned all day that the key is really subtle. It's like so much of snapper fishing, whether you're fishing with plastics, you're fishing with bait, that subtle presentation, you've got to get it right, and every day's different. You know, you've got to work out your current, how deep you're fishing. Sometimes the wind plays a factor, but getting that bait down to where the fish are, without them thinking, oh, that looks too different for me to eat it is the key. Yeah. The, the, the key is just to get it more natural looking as you possibly can. So the lighter the lead you can get down there, the better. And, and then letting them eat it. You know, we've, yeah. had, we've, had, like, we've hooked a few fish today and every one of them has nearly bitten differently. Different, yeah. different moods on the tide from a, a bump and a slow load to some of them have absolutely ripped but it off. You'll notice now that, that that moon's starting to come up in the sky, these things will get more aggressive and you'll, get, you'll just be free spool and they'll just bang it and you click it in the gear and they're on there. So they're the not play around with so, it. So the fishing's gonna get better. So yep. you and I are sitting around talking to this fish, it's no good, we wanna get it in. Get another one. Get another bait out and go and catch it. Yep. <laughs> right, with, with my snapper fishing, I know I like to keep it nice and simple. Couple of sets of different gangs, mustard big guns, 
and mustard double seven double sixes, the tarpons, and a range of sinkers from say four to seven ball is what does my sort of snapper fishing. Um, pretty simple, set them up in a tackle box like that, and away you go. <laughs> well, Dicko is drifting a bait out the back. Tried a little bit of a different tact here. Gone out the light outfit. I've dropped one of these Oki style jigs. A weighted jig with all these little tentacles hanging off it. Two little hooks. And just flooded along the bottom. Something solid's coming, eating it. We might have to chase this dicker. I've got a really light outfit here. <laughs> Not a lot of line. I'll get the parachute in for you. Want me to he back started, her up a bit? Uh, it might be alright actually. He started slowing up now. I'll just leave my line out there. I think yeah. I'm well away from yours. Yeah, no, you're cool. It's a style of fishing that captivates a lot of anglers these days. So these Oki, they've got a lot of names, but you know, Oki jigs, Octa jigs. There's various companies which make, make these jigs and they, they, they're very effective, but they're a very simple style to fish. You know, they're obviously heavy, so you can fish fish at a lot of depth, and presenting them to, to fish like snapper is effective. They love getting their, getting their lips around these things. And there's a little bit of a, a technique which comes to fishing with them, because what you'll find with these jigs is they're very heavy, but they, they come with two little assist hooks. So you can't, when you, when you do hook fish on these jigs, you really can't muscle them. So there's no point in using heavy tackle. As you can see, I ain't using heavy tackle. I'm using one of the, the Wilson's blade and tails light outfits. I think my, my choice of outfits when fishing this is, is a rod lot, the light or the medium weight. It's got a little bit of strength down low, as you get with a lot of the Wilson's rods. But it's also very tippy up the top, so hides a lot of those head shakes of these fish and tries to keep those little assist hooks embedded in these fish. Righto, Dicko. Got a little bit of colour. He's taking a bit of coaxing up this fish. Obviously pretty light outfit, and I think he's a solid a solid snappy. Well, theoretically, you're using a brim out there. <laughs> I am. Oh, he's a nice fish. He's a good fish. And just goes to show you, you can use light gear to tame big fish sometimes. You just got to take your time, use the shock absorption of the rod, and get him going. Nice fish. He's a good fish. There you go, look at that. Look at that, good work. That's there's awesome. That little, there's that little jig. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice work. Very nice, mate. You gonna come over here? Mate, that is a rod that's designed to be a brim rod, but when you're chasing fish like snapper on these little Oki style jigs, as you can see, those hooks are not big and you can't really put too much authority on a fish anyway. Having that nice soft tip helps cushion, cushion the impact the fish throws on those hooks to stop them coming out. And if you are going to use those jigs, they are very effective. A lot of the guys down around Coffs love using these things. And uh, yeah, get, get the right outfit. That's the Wilson's Blade and Tails light. It's matched up with a little Fluger. 10 pound braid, 15 pound litre. Well, you've and, done, done well. And there you go. Something that, uh, obviously we've smacked them on the bait today. It's a bit of variety. I thought I'd mix it up, mate. Get a little bit, little bit jiggy. Just to show you that these things work as well. What a lovely fish. There's got to be five, five kilos. On a blade and tails light, that's that's pretty awesome. On your tackle store shelves these days, you'll see a lot of these weird and wonderful little jigs, and they've made quite a name for themselves when it comes to catching snapper and pearlies and a, a variety of other species. Uh, they're commonly called names like Octa Jig, Oki Jigs. This one is one of the Shimano brand, the Lacanus, and they come in a variety of weights and colours and sizes. And what you'll find is two toe points and a nice little tentacly skirt and these two little assist hooks. And the idea being that you, this will drop to quite a depth. You can fish them in a variety of depths. And it's a case of just subtly presenting them in front of the fish and get those tentacles wiggling away. And you'll find that predatory fish like your snapper will come away and chomp on these. And the retrieve is very simple as well. Once you've found your fish, initiate your drift. Let your line head towards bottom. I like using these with braided lines just because you've got such good contact with your lure. It also is visible, shows you when that lure's hit bottom, you get that slackening of your line the moment it hits bottom. 
And then, once you have got to the desired depth, get it down to bottom, engage your reel, and then very, very slowly retrieve it. You don't want to make this too fast and erratic. It can put fish off. What they want is something that looks like a really small animal that's trying to get away from their area. Something that looks very nice to eat with those little bits of jiggy bits shaking away in the water. And what you'll often find is that the fish won't come up and whack it like they will with a soft plastic or a bait. They'll very often come and bump it. Now the guys that have had a lot of success with this are also the guys that fish hard bodies for brim a lot. And because the retrieve is very, very similar. It's a slow roll retrieve. And when you start getting those bumps, which can be often very big fish, you don't want to strike them. You just want to simply keep that retrieve going and you'll find the fish will actually load up. That rod will load up with weight and away you go. Keep doing that through likely looking zones that are holding fish and you'll find fish are about, you're gonna start catching the Oki jigs very quickly. And if you are lazy like myself at times, another very simple retrieve which has caught truckloads of snapper, bait or Oki jigs. Stick your rod in the rod holder, let the boat slowly lift them up and down off the bottom and wait for that rod to load up and away you go. It's well, well worth knowing that little technique and having a few of those in your box. Some days they can turn around the results when other techniques aren't working that well. There's so many techniques that you can use to catch snapper and the idea when we put together this DVD was to get out and find the best we could of the lure and the bait scene. And I think now, if you're either new into snapper fishing or you've been doing it for a while, there's plenty there to get on the water and try some new stuff. I think though that it really comes down to you now to get out there and practice it, put some time in on the water, and most importantly, believe that these things work. It sounds, sounds a little bit funny, but I think when a, a fisher gets out there in the water and they genuinely believe that a technique will work, they tend to fish it with conviction and very soon the results will come. Get out there, experiment, believe it'll work, and I've no doubt you're gonna be catching a whole heap of snapper and having a whole lot of fun very soon.